everyone, it's Kira and Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to show you how to create this gorgeous little covered cup to hold some little things on your desk or your makeup table. And I just used a few simple tools and my hands and some paint. So let's get started. Today I'm going to use a couple of things. Um, the main thing is the tool, the main tool I'm going to use. So I have this empty can of Red Bull and it's the 8.4 ounce can for this project. I keep a variety of empty soda cans in my studio for projects like this. So the reason that I'm saying it's the 8.4 ounce one is because it's a thinner bottle and to go with the floral medallion mold, it fits really well. See, like the, the base of the bottle fits with this mold, which I'm going to use to make a lid for my container. I also have my metal stamping tools and one of the um, fancy scallop border cutters. And I'm just going to have a little disclaimer here. This is <clears throat> my cup full of essential tools. I have these on my table all the time because I use them a lot. And one of them would be a knitting needle. And the other is my set of rubber tip tools, my set of um, double-ended ball styluses. Ball, you hear that? My New York just came out. And um, these, this other second set of rubber tip tools that has like the small pointy ones and the chisel. Um, these tools are kind of soft and these are more firm. So the final piece I have in here is a spoon shaped, um, it's a dental tool, but it's got like a spoon shaped sort of dagger tip on one end and the spoon on the other and these are the tools I go to all the time so I just keep them together in a little cup it happens to be my virtual retreat mug on my studio table so first I'm going to talk about color because I, I'm developing a color palette for the project and what I did is I took some Sculpey Souffle and this is about one half of the latte color and one quarter cowboy and one quarter key lime. Cowboy is a dark brown and that was all I had left. And then this color is called key lime. So I have pure key lime, I have my mixed color, and then I have some Primo Accents regular gold. And the way to get your colors to all go together, really, is to have a little bit of your main color in the other colors. Now because I used key lime to make this color, they already go together really well. But the gold is off because it does not include any of the other main color palettes from or colors from the palette. So I'm going to cut off the end of this piece here. And that is going to get mixed into my gold so that it becomes part of this palette. So I'm just going to go mix that with my pasta machine. So now you can see that the gold has been toned down a little bit. It's still highly metallic because I only put about uh, less than a quarter of the base color into it, but it's going to go really well now with these three colors. So that's how you get a palette for a project that all goes together. Just make sure that you have whatever your main color is, that it's in all of the colors. Otherwise your colors can kind of like stick out against each other. and Sometimes that's, they just don't flow. It's a little weird. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is cover about half of this can with this by rolling it into um, a rectangle and wrapping it around the can. And I'm going to use my tool here as a ruler to just cut off those ragged edges. And I'm going to square up one edge 
And this is really, um, I can't really tell you measurements. Some people get really into measurements, like cut it exactly 8.25 inches long. Um, I don't do that. I do it by feel. So this piece of clay is uh, about a medium thin thickness. It's a number four on my pasta machine. And I'm just going to wrap it around my can. I'm going to slightly firm it down and then what happens on the other side is you can touch it and press it a little bit and then open it back up and you'll see there's a line on here now. See that? Of where to cut it. So I can cut on that line and then I'm going to have edges that fit well together. And then I'm just going to smooth my seam with my fingers. It might take a couple minutes to really smooth it out nice, but you work on that. Okay, once you have your seam smoothed, then you're just going to want to take your blade and clean up any like bumps. If there's, if any part of this is really wavy and kind of off of straight and, and you know it's going to stick up, you can just use your blade to do a little bit of minor cleanup here. Make sure your edges are straight on the top and bottom. You can also use your blade to kind of tap it back into place because sometimes just when you're laying it on the can it stretches and it doesn't end up where you laid it down. So just use your blade. I'm gently tapping it against there to straighten it out. And now we're going to decorate. The first thing I want to do is throw a um, border piece on the bottom edge of the cup. So I'm going to go ahead and take my border cutter and I'm going to take a piece that I've just rolled out of that gold color I made and I'm going to cut a nice big chunk of it. And these border cutters are easy. You just press it down. <clears throat> this clay was rolled to the second widest setting on my pasta machine, which for me is a number two. So you see how I got the edge there. And I'm just going to roll this onto my bottle. Just going to start with one piece of this design and see how it goes. I'm going to start on the seam area, if I can find it. Here we go. So that if I have any sort of messiness, it's all going to be in the back in one spot. Okay, so I have... Yeah, see, it's not going to match exactly, but that's okay. them both in the same spot so that they all right so that's gonna be my piece for that and before I stick that on I'm gonna do some texturing so these um, stamping tools are so awesome and amazing and fun to use and I'm gonna use a few of my favorites just to create a design. So one of the things I want to do is echo this um, sort of rounded design there. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this rounded stamped design at the top. And as I go around my bottle here, my can, it's going to probably pop in and out like that because this is actually a very lightweight Kind of a soda can. That's all right. I can always stick my knitting needle inside there to straighten it out. Another thing you might want to do, you could fill your can with um, something like a resin. It's, it's really up to you if you if the fact that the can wobbles in and out gets on your nerves. I don't really care. It's all right. So. There's my first layer of texture. And then 
I've got this awesome little tool, which is a basket weave. So I can actually stamp this around and change the direction and make it look like a basket. It's really cool because it's made to look like a basket weave when you do it. So each time you just put one next to it and turn it a quarter turn so that as you go around you're getting this basket weave look. Alright, so my basket weave area is done and I'm going to go ahead and put this border on. I'm just looking for my back seam because it's still slightly visible. So I think I'm going to step it up so that it comes sort of up and over. And I'll save that bottom edge for a little something else. Okay, so I'm just going to meet them together in the back, press them on gently. And now, see how the, um, I don't know if you can see it, but the it's come away from the can a little bit, and that's because I've been pressing on it. So I'm just going to use my hands to gently sort of firm it back against the can. And I'm using my back hand also, and I'm just gently twisting and pressing to get it to come back to the shape of the can. Okay, so now I have this and I've got some really fun uh, patterns that are scallopy like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and press that design into the top of the scallop. And then I've got <clears throat> a smaller one that I can use to do these sort of sideways designs. So you can use these tools to create your own designs and textures and patterns just by varying their position. And then I had chosen another one. No, nope, that's not that one. This one's a flower which is one of my favorite motifs. So they're going to get a big flower right in the middle of that big scallop. And then there's a leaf design too. So this leaf is going to come out from the side of the flower like this. A leaf and a leaf. It's actually a little grouping of leaves. See that? So that's the um, flower and leaf. And now I'm going to go ahead and put together the lid. So for the lid, I'm going to mold this floral medallion. Now the way I prefer to do a mold like this is to first get my clay really good and soft and conditioned and then make a circle of clay that I've already tested to make sure this amount is good for the mold. So you know, you'll want to like smush it in there, see if you've got too much, and try to get it to a point where you know you have the right amount of clay. And then over here on my glass tabletop, I'm just kind of pressing it out into a circle. Like that. Which I can now put down into the mold. And 
And then if you want to firm it up a little in the middle, which I'm going to do, you can add a little more clay. Okay. And now I'm going to get a cookie cutter that's the right size, and I'm going to cut this out. Okay, a really, really awesome tool to have in your studio is a set of graduated circle cutters. And I know that this second one is large enough to go all the way around and cover the top of this. Um, like it's, it's a little bigger, but it's the right size for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so there wasn't much excess because this mold is perfect for what I'm trying to make with it. But if you had, you know, had any overlapping excess type, you know, you could cut it off with this. And then I'm going to use this to make the other part of the project too. So now I can add some of the details from my main can um, holder thing that I'm making onto this to tie it all together. So I'm going to use this to press some of those similar designs into the curly parts of this mold so that I can bring that design together and then maybe I can find a spot like in here to put my leaf pattern. So this is how you can alter what's already there and I've talked about altering molds before and it's something that I really like to do because then not every single molded piece that you make comes out looking exactly the same. So there's just a little trick for you. There's other places here too, like maybe right here where I can put that half moon texture design and just kind of change what came out of this mold into something that goes better with the designs that I'm putting onto this piece. And last but not least, I remember that I'm going to be adding this color and it's going to go into some detail spots. So why not make my little handle right now because then it'll be on here and I won't have to worry about it. So I intended to make a little sort of handle that you can grab out of another color. Put it right here in the center of the flower and because I'm going to bake it in a minute I don't have to press very hard because they're going to adhere during baking so that's going to work out well for me. And I'm just using my thumbs to shape it into a little sort of teardrop shape to grab later. Okay, so work on your top until you like it. I see I'm a little out of round, so I'm going to use my blade to push it back in. And go bake. For this next part, we're going to take that same circle cutter and I mixed the rest of the um, color that I had for the can with a little bit more of the kiwi to give it a slightly different color from the rest of the can. And I rolled it out to a shape that's going to fit that cutter and I'm going to cut out a circle. And this is going to be for the base of the can. I baked my can for about 10 minutes and let me just tell you a trick for doing stuff like this because I'm using a toaster oven so my can had to go in the oven sideways like this which means part of it was going to rest on the ground or the surface so I hit it with my heat gun for a few seconds before putting it in the oven just to set the surface of the clay so that it wouldn't mush so now I'm going to release this from the can because it's going to be a little bit stuck. <laughs> so bloopers aside, what I ended up doing here to stop fighting was I decided to use my tonic shears 
which are a Tim Holtz product, to go ahead and cut off the top of the can because it was hurting my ability to get it out, and then just cut down the can until I could pop it right out of there. Usually that doesn't happen to me, but of course it would happen while I'm creating a video. <laughs> So once you get your piece off of the can, which, you know, I don't feel bad about cannibalizing a soda can. It's recyclable and I can always make more. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and take this and set it on the base. And I'm just going to center it. There's going to be a slight tiny bit of overlap all the way around and that's okay. And I'm going to give it a gentle push and I have already created a snake of the key lime color which I want to use around the edge. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and treat this area with the seam like, the, like it's the back of the piece. And I'm gonna keep all of my seams there in one spot. And I'm just pressing my snake all the way around the base. Like so. I'm gonna use one of my rubber tools because now my fingers are too big to get in the spot to firm my seam and lessen it a little bit. And that's really what these tools are great for is like once you start getting into these small areas where your fingers don't fit anymore, you break out the tools to help you out. Okay, so now I'm going to use some more of these fun little leather tools. I've got one that's like a, it's, it's tiny, it's a circle with a little design on it and I'm going to stamp all the way around this base. Okay, the motion that I'm using as I stamp is down and in, and that is so that I create a nice defined pattern, and also I'm pressing it down to meet with the tile so that it's a nice flat base, and in so that everything is all sticking together. So you see now I've created a cup with a base to it. And the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of this kiwi color as a decorative detail because I have some spaces here between the um, scallops that I want to fill. So I'm just going to pinch off pieces to put here. And then I'm going to use this other circle tool to press a design. So those are all done now and I'm just really loving how this design is turning out. I'm gonna go get the lid from the oven. Here's the lid piece and it's baked and what we're going to do now is make it so that this lid will sit on here without falling off. And the way we're going to do that is pretty simple. You know, you could drive yourself nuts trying to figure it out, but I'm just going to do it a simple way. So I've got my cookie cutter that's one circle smaller than the one I used to cut the base. And that's going to fit inside here. And all I'm going to do is flip this over and make a circle that fits inside the cookie cutter with my snake. So I can kind of eyeball it to how much I'm going to need. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use the cookie cutter and my tools to create something that fits really well inside of here. So I'm just going to make sure that my cookie cutter is pretty much centered. 
and then I'm gonna start pressing down my snake so that it meets the cookie cutter. All right, and for that, I'm also going to use a tool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press the snake so that it meets up with the edges here. I'm gonna make it in a pattern so that it looks nice. But really, I'm just trying to stick it down at the edge of the cutter. Because I checked the cutter, I know that this placement of the clay against the cutter is going to work out perfectly to make the lid fit on the cup. You don't want to bake this on top of the cup because then you run the risk of um, having it like get stuck and then you can't open it. So I'm going to bake it like that. And when it's done, I'll pop it off the cookie cutter. Okay. We are fresh out of the oven on a full baking. So I baked for actually 45 minutes just to make sure that everything's all done. And this is still warm, and here's the secret a lot of times to getting metal off of clay when you're forming it, is to do it while it's warm, because then it likes to come right off. Okay, so now I have a lid that fits, and it's not going to fall off. It's a little wobbly, but eh, it's all right. But it's not going to fall off if the cup tips, which is perfect. And I'm just going to use a blade to scoop this off of the tile real quick and easy like that. And move this hot tile off my work surface. At this point, you could decide to be done. Or you can take it a step further, which is what I usually do to make my pieces look really nice and finished. I like to antique them. And what that means is that you'll take a dark brown or black paint. White, if you've made something that's dark and you want to antique it with white paint, some people like to do that. And a nice stiff brush. And I'm going to use a surface here to protect my uh, paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this paint thickly onto your piece get it down in the cracks, let it sit for a second, and then you're going to wipe it off. And what this does is it gives a more sort of aged and used look to the piece so it doesn't look quite so shiny and brand new. And that just tends to make your pieces look more professional and more finished. It also helps to highlight any design work that you have done because it gets down in the cracks and then you can wipe it off the top surfaces so that you can really see all those beautiful designs that you've put on there. And this is a really simple way to make your piece look really professional and done. So you see how I'm starting to see a more aged look. It's got sort of a stained finish. I'm getting this down in all the cracks and I'm just using a, a shop rag. I have a whole pile of shop rags from the um, home store that I keep around just for antiquing because they're soft, they get the paint off without scratching the piece. Okay, so there's that and I'm going to do the base as well. So I'm going to paint it right down into my designs 
making sure I get it down in all the cracks and crevices. Especially on those stamped designs. Because this process is what brings them out, makes you see them. When you wipe the paint off the top surface. And if it doesn't wipe off enough, you can actually come back with <clears throat> a wet rag and do some more um, rubbing to get the paint off. So antiquing is a process usually, and you can do as much or as little as you want. So I'm just going to continue all the way around, putting on paint, let it sit for a second, and then wipe it off. So I did end up wanting to take down some of the color that was so dark on here. So I'm just going to show you quickly what my hands are doing. I've got my cloth and this end of it is dipped in water so it's wet. And then I've got the rest of it sort of against my palm. And all I'm doing is scrubbing and then pulling it off. Scrub with the wet end and then use the back side of my hand to dry it and pull off the paint and I'm rubbing against it with the heel of my hand. So I'm just getting down in some of these crack areas to pull some paint off the detail designs. That one you might need to use your thumb to get down in there. Okay, but you can definitely go back over something you've antiqued and uh, use a little water to pull the design back out if you think it's too dark, which I did for that. So here it is, all finished. Isn't that pretty? Look at that cool basket design. And I really like how I was able to use the metal stamp tools to bring some of the designs together. So even though I used the mold to create the base shape for this, and all that detail, then I also was able to use the stamping tools to go back in and add my own designs to make it all go together. So now I have a really cute little covered cup.